This is Chantel Boltonetti from ARC Advisory Group. I'm one of the members of ARC's Industrial Networks Coverage Team and have conducted numerous studies in this area, including on industrial Ethernet switches, industrial Ethernet devices, serial device networks, and wireless. Today, I'd like to tell you about some of the highlights from our recent update on the market for industrial Ethernet switches. A number of features distinguish industrial Ethernet switches from their commercial brethren. Ruggedized enclosures and high IP or English protection ratings are some of the first things most customers think of when comparing industrial switches to commercial ones. But other distinguishing characteristics may include mounting type, type of connectors, ability to withstand extended temperature ranges, passive cooling, redundant components, and conformance to industrial infrastructure standards. Now this report specifically excludes dedicated industrial wireless devices, including wireless Ethernet devices, which are covered in separate ARC reports. Now one of the good things about the industrial Ethernet switch market is that it continues to sustain double-digit growth in both infrastructure and automation applications as key portions of the global economy recover, and Ethernet continues to cement its position as the industrial network infrastructure of choice. Originally largely reliant on discrete automation applications, growth in the market for industrial Ethernet switches will increasingly be driven by use in infrastructure installations and process automation. Infrastructure applications ranging from smart grid implementations in particular electrical substation automation to intelligent rail, highway, and other transportation projects are increasingly reliant on industrial Ethernet. In process automation, industrial Ethernet is already the backbone of network of choice at the control level and is now migrating to the device level. Concurrent with this growth, the industrial Ethernet switch market has experienced a wave of acquisitions on the supplier side. Several of these acquisitions were made by suppliers of peripheral products, like connectors, HMI, panel meters, etc., looking to take advantage of surging interest in industrial Ethernet infrastructure in hopes of pulling in their complementary product lines. Now, in terms of factors contributing to market growth, Industrial Ethernet is increasingly establishing itself as the common industrial network, displacing application-specific field buses. Both horizontal and vertical connectivity requirements are increasing in manufacturing, as well as infrastructure and security applications. We see flatter network hierarchies, uh, placing larger burdens on infrastructure components, spurring reliance on Ethernet technology. Continued migration into more recession-proof segments, such as electric power, intelligent transportation, and security and surveillance, offsets cyclical and other downturns in the traditional industrial applications. Although, as I mentioned previously, we do see increased adoption on the process side of the industrial space. And even beyond that, we see expanded use of industrial Ethernet in actual sensing and control applications rather than just data acquisition, and that too will help spur growth. We also see escalating use of embedded video applications, including in machine vision, and these applications require greater bandwidth, POE, or power over Ethernet, and IP capabilities for the IP cameras used in security and surveillance applications. Industrial Ethernet also represents cost savings for users OEMs and integrators and vendors relative to dedicated or application-specific automation networks. And finally, both Ethernet and wireless are emerging as the core infrastructure for the coming Internet of Things. Now, factors potentially inhibiting growth in our minds include certainly the continuing competitive and price pressures throughout the architecture. We also see continued uncertainty, stagnation, and increased competition in the Asian market in particular, especially China and Japan, which are both important markets for industrial Ethernet switches. 
there are two um, are also persistent concerns about network security. A continued lack of a security skill set at the implementation level is also a hindrance. We also see that the switch functionality that's currently delivered in a standalone box or switch is increasingly embedded into end devices such as drives and used in daisy chain or ring topologies. On the other end, we see the functionality associated with higher end managed switches can migrate into HMIs and PLCs. There are also, of course, reliable wireless applications that function in the same target environment that uh, industrial Ethernet suppliers are pursuing. And of course, wireless has significant inc incremental advantages when it's reliable in areas such as cost of implementation. And also, uh, alternative technologies such as Ethernet over power lines is attractive, but in the current iteration, its performance is, literate, is limited excuse me, by low data rates. This will limit its applicability in our minds and therefore its potential as a displacing technology. Now, industrial Ethernet switch suppliers are faced with a widening landscape upon which to direct your, your strategies. Things like device characteristics, standard support, tool sets supplied, and a myriad of other decisions must be driven by which of the market subsets are to be targeted. It's important that you recognize the continued stratification of the industrial Ethernet switch market and tailor your product offerings accordingly. Now, with the exception of IEEE 802.1x, most security standards, excuse me, most security strategies that limit physical and electronic access to the network, such as VPNs or virtual private networks, are implemented at the solution level. So it's important that vendors evaluate and execute the security approach that is the best fit for your target market because there's many layers of uh, implementation possibilities there for a secure network. Also, there's the issue of ease of use at both the device and system level for both the controls customer as well as the IT personnel. And this is emerging as a key differentiator between different vendors' products. Another area of success that uh, suppliers are pursuing is the move towards standard ring redundancy schemes, whereas pr proprietary schemes have tended to be uh, the norm to date. Now, these studies are designed to appeal to a wide variety of audiences. Suppliers are typically interested in our studies for business plan planning purposes. They also use them to manage the direction of their product development, as well as access the um, competitive landscape and use them to better understand market needs. Increasingly, sales and marketing professionals are benefiting from our studies, especially studies that offer regional and country-based information for sales and marketing planning. Financial services companies rely on ARC data to access markets and the strengths and weaknesses of major suppliers. And end users, well, they rely on our research to make purchasing decisions, creating short, short lists, excuse me, short lists for your RFI process, as well as um, supplier selection and other uh, functions associated with purchasing these types of products. So please visit our website for more information on this and other studies. Rest assured, if you have a relationship with ARC, then you and your team can have access to the best possible data for informed strategic decisions. Thank you very much for viewing this video. Again, my name is Chantal Bolsonetti, and we at the ARC Advisory Group look forward to being of assistance.